Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Made in Japan here on Pastiche of Skin. We've got a particularly unique little treat for you this time. This is actually a free game that's available on the Hong Kong store, and it's called... Magic Library. Thank you very much, Miyu. Miyu is the main character that will be leading us through the tale of Kurari Magic Library. It's a Welcome card strategy Kurari game. Magic Library. Your name is Miyu? Yes, that's what I just told them. Your name's Miyu. You may notice that the game is actually quite well voice acted, not brilliantly in quality of discussion, but it is actually um, a nice touch for it to actually be done like this. Now, I'll let you listen into a bit of the explanation of the story, because essentially, it's a little bit weird about where this library came from and why the whole story exists, but enjoy. What? Thank you for applying to our library. Normally, people look for a bigger one. <laughs> We are using a rundown building, so while it's really big, we were worried that nobody would come. We're so lucky you came. Thanks for the warm welcome. I work alone, and I've been working late nights for so long now. Look at me. My skin's all dry, and I've got bags under my eyes. So I've changed my makeup, but I don't know if it's working. I see. Ah, uh, where were we? You know about the state of our library, right? Well, kind of, but... Let me lay it out again for you. The Library of Babel in the Super Dimension holds all known information on dimensional space. We librarians protected that library and managed the codices within. But one day, the Library of Babel exploded for reasons unknown. This destroyed the balance of dimensional space which was connected to the library. The codices stored in the library were scattered throughout the dimensions. Librarians started to clean up the wreckage and recover the codices, but rebuilding the Library of Babel was impossible. So we decided to build regional libraries throughout dimensional space for better efficiency with the recovery of the codices. This very library is one of those created. Curare Magic Library. That's the name of our library. Starting today, Miyu can help recover the Lost Codices. As you can see, I'm overloaded with all the administrative work I get handed. I wasn't able to do anything about the recovery of the Codices. But now that you're here, we can get started. Yeah, I will do my best. That's what I came for. <laughs> You're pretty confident, aren't you? It's gonna be tough to do it alone, so I'll introduce someone who can help. Huh? There's another librarian besides me? No, Swangzi isn't a librarian. She's a codex. She's staying in the library now. I should ask her to help you. Zhongzi? Yes. If I ask her, she will help. Maybe. M ma Even if Zhongzi hurts your feelings, don't let her get to you. Okay, wait, what? Well then, my office is at the top of the library. Stop by any time if you need anything. W wait a minute, Master Eris? Master Eris? Once we leave, after the main explanation of why the library is there, we're introduced to Zhang Sui, who is what you would call a fellow in this game, which is essentially a party member in the same vein as any JRPG. So not just is this kind of like a card strategy game, it's a team-based strategy game with a rule set for characters, and obviously uh, Zhang Sui is whatever her class is. In this case, it's, I think it's a, a healer class. But each of your fellows actually join the party and come in with you into battles as you actually work your way through the game. Uh, you have a selection of fellows, and you have ones that are unlockable, or ones that are unlockable through a story, or ones that just appear through special circumstances. But that is the nature of the game. You, the, the unlocking is the main point of this game, just to find more stuff, along with a pretty robust storyline. This is the lobby, the center of the library. All of the librarian Miu's recovery work will proceed through this lobby. Hey, Zwangzi. By the way, you don't have to call me librarian. Hmm? Then I'll call you Miu, okay? <laughs> sure. Now I'm going to tell you what you should do first. Explore the main story and level up. Explore? You have to work hard to recover Kodaisis. That's basic. 
You can explore various zones and defeat the enemies to collect Kadisis. Okay, I get it. First, reach Librarian level 30. There's more important work waiting for you. So you're saying explore more and level up? I'm a little unsure, but I can figure it out, I guess. You go, girl. You know you've got this. You're a strong and independent woman. You don't need no Zongzui to tell you what you do. <laughs> right, so yeah, we start our exploration into the story mode. Uh, this is run chapter by chapter. Every single game or every single chapter has its own kind of like setup. It's uh, initially a story element, then it has exploration, and then it usually has an encounter at the end of all three of them. So it's a very, very formulaic setup for each of the chapters. It makes it really easy to understand how they've managed to actually give a very prolonged story out of this because I've played solid hours and it doesn't seem to have any sign of stopping anytime soon. Obviously the main voice acting as well gets dropped at this point because you're past the point of the initial storyline This is a, or the tutorial part. Um, I think this was actually probably a good choice because the amount of uh, dialogue in these scenes does get longer and longer now as the story gets more and more involved you have more characters interacting with each other and becomes very much like a traditional japanese anime in the way the storyline has been known with very episodic nature of it so the first explore section kind of has you uh, running lane by lane selecting items and picking them up as you go along there is really five things you can pick up in this you can pick up money you can pick up exp you can pick up shards which increases your focus and you can pick up health and you can pick up parts of codices which are the cards now you can tell very easily which one's which uh purple is the exp blue is the focus gold is the coins and the shards the um pieces of codices are inside boxes the um simple three lanes of running through and dodging it, it doesn't take too much mental effort and really really shows that this was an almost touch screen experience initially that has been converted towards controller because I um, imagine this would have been a little bit more awkward on a touchscreen device rather than actually being able to jump from lane to lane quite easily whenever you're using a gamepad. So once you reach the end of the explorer section, whatever you have selected in the bottom right corner, uh, in this case it shows a shield which is the tanking rule, if it chooses the deck that you're going to use for combat. So you really only have a attack deck, a heal deck and a tank deck. So you have that, have that selected before you get into battle because you can't change once you're in battle. And this will actually help you choose or decide the cards that you'll have and the attacks you'll have at the bottom of your screen along with your fellows slightly above you and then your enemy in the main center of the screen. You can see the enemy before you start. Uh, they all use artwork that is cutified and Moe style characters of random pieces of mythology and history. Every single one of them is done in this. Uh, Matahari is in here. Um, the, the Minotaur is in here. And they're all done as cute girls in costumes. Which is pretty much the best premise of this show. It, it kind of, it's there to have a lot of cutesy and fan servicey moments. But it's very entertaining to actually watch and play through. So we're getting to show all of the buffs and debuffs that actually occur in the game. It makes it a little bit easier. And battle begins in any second. So essentially you choose each of your skills. Uh, in the case of this, it's actually a lot of turtling and things that actually protect yourself from being damaged. And you just attack back and attack back to reduce their energy and you stop yourself from dying if you need to by using health potions. It does look very simple in the very early days of the gameplay, but it gets so much harder whenever you're fighting multiple enemies and you're actually balancing healing and defensive techniques with different cards. It gets very, very involved and does force you to feel like you need to get new cards just like this by playing so much more. So you get a card, a codices or a codex from every single fight. These codexes can be got in a different manner. You can of course go to the real money store that exists in the game. Now the real money store doesn't just stay with buying cards and buying packs. It also has costumes for your characters that affect stat building, like an EXP towards cards or EXP towards your character. These are cosmetic of course, but also have a value in doing extra things for um, gaining stats. Now. I only give a quick look through there's like costume sets for each of the three main characters you have in the game while you also have all of these item boxes that are available that can be purchased with one of three different types of currency there is in-game gold there's in-game uh i can't well there was that green leaf well essentially they, they look like uh, lucky charms leaf um clovers i think they call them clovers and the clovers can be used to buy most things in the game while the 
gold can really only be used to purchase really basic items. And then the last thing, of course, is gems, which are uh, converted from real cash in the PlayStation Store, which I obviously won't use. But there's so many things in here that you can pick up for crafting and for modifying cards. Here, we're looking at card packs directly. The thing is, with the card packs, it made me realize how long this game really is. Because not just do you have the card packs and advanced card packs, which are guarantee almost guaranteed rares. There is season one and season two and season three and season four. There is a lot of gameplay built into this that have actually been just from years and years of use. So I thought what would be a good way to finish off a quick first look review is just a, a quick look at some of the cards you can get by buying a couple of decks. I might do this more often. So um, I purposely pre-record this so I'm not going to have as immediate reactions as I had to the first time I did this, but I might record them in future to be a little bit better. Because the first card I got was a super rare on the first try to put this together for you guys. I thought, yeah, that's that, that was well worth it. And as you can see, it's Ariel. Um, I don't know if this is meant to be Ariel the Little Mermaid, but she's obviously in a maid's dress. And then each character always in the beautiful girl with a relevant-esque costume. Some of them more so than others. Now what you want to have is rare cards, but obviously normal cards can be used. The rares and rare pluses are the objects that kind of uh, can be crafted down into uh, material, the same way you can disenchant them in Hearthstone to reuse for making other cards that you want. So after getting rid of that deck, or buying that deck, I need to leave the money store before I spend any more money. Oh, that was so close. I actually did spend about 40000 in that single setting because it was hard to avoid. Now, the editing deck is a setup of actually like what weapons or what skills you want to be using. It's a lot of detail to get into, so I'm not going to cover it right now. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Karari Magic Library. It's available for you to play right now on the Hong Kong store completely free. So all it requires you to make an account. So I really don't want to tell any more about this. And I hope to see you guys playing it because I'm going to be playing it again more. I will see you guys all in the next episode of Made in Japan. It's so much stuff to play. So until the next episode, bye bye